Good morning. Good evening. What time of day it is? Here, favorite transgender female back online with a new blog I'm going to do today. Talk about my early days of transitioning from a man to a woman. I guess here's what happened. I said about almost 10 years back, be almost about 10 years in my hormones. So, what I'm going to say, how it happens is like this. Here's what can happen. When you start taking hormones to transition to a woman, don't make it all fun and games out there because be prepared. Be prepared to lose all your male friends you had. Like, you know, be, be prepared to maybe disown from your family what happened to me, yes. Also, when you start taking hormones, things, physical things happen inside your body. First, you're going to have all kinds of hot flashes. Like you have hot flashes that you never had before. I'm talking about real hot flashes there. I mean, you have those hot flashes. And they, they're not anything you can do about it, but you will um, be able to. But, you know, that comes in common. And also, your nipples, your breasts start to grow on hormones. They start to get nipples on the breast, female nipples are talking about. And they get, they get very sensitive to a point where you have to wear a bra. You can't get out where and you won't be able, you, you won't be able to get out wearing a bra. It usually happens within the first month of hormones, you got a little nipples there. But then they, then they start to grow your breasts and they get bigger. As the time goes on, you get, the face get very smooth. Your skin get very smooth. <sighs> then you start to, then you notice your behavior start to change a lot. You feel very attracted to men, which is normal female behavior. You start acting totally female, because your brain will go, you'll get shouty horse and leg. Ooh, it can hurt. Uh, muscle clamps are gone. Then, after a while, two other things will happen. Number one, your brain will get, your brain will go through a rewire. You know what that is? A permanent rewire. In some cases, you come out get a, a rewire as a better person, a more conscious, more rare. In some cases, it's a person mentally ill or has a have been mentally born mentally ill, born mentally retarded, and it's do this chart, this hormone, the rewire removes the mental removes the mental retardation permanently. I went through a rewire when I did my hormone. I do, know. and that actually did change me from, from, and t terminate, and and I was no longer, found myself no longer mentally ill, but I'm more conscious and more aware of what's going on around me, and doing something about it because I managed to go above that too. But when you take hormones, you know you, you're gonna grow your breasts. You're gonna get very feminine. You're gonna find yourself wanting to wear dresses and lady stuff. You will probably want to throw your manswear out, we do, because the other manswear will not look on you. As your hair grows in, you really start to notice it big time because you don't have the urge to have sex with women. You have the urge to have, and you have it with guys, males, but not with ladies because, you know, you... And then you have a, you go to a lady's room, you, you pretty much act female because you walk around high heels, you look really good, matter of fact. You know, after being on it for a long time, you get used to being a woman. And then you, but the biggest part about taking hormones is you have to stop taking hormones three or four weeks before bottom surgery. Your mind comes up in September first week of early, night in early September, right when kids are going back to school. So I hope there's some room on a train, gonna be like, oh my God, not to. So that gonna be fun. <laughs> so when I get on the train, you know, and I start traveling to, um, down to Quebec, that's another thing. And going there, lying on an opera, having my uh, gender rearranged, to be a female, 
And then after that, I got, then I got recovery, and I got to come home. I will put YouTube videos about that. I will post some YouTube videos in Montreal, when in Montreal, get my after, right after surgery. Or I may post one before surgery in the room, or post one after surgery. So you would know that and recovery video. If I post quite a few of them too, I hope they'll well. Those will come up probably in September. It won't be out till then. So be look out uh, on YouTube. Look out for those videos. You'll see them. I'll post them on YouTube. My, my recovery video after SRS. So that's another thing that I got coming up. But, you know, hopefully things will get much, 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 much better than this because really it's like something I got to do. I got to get done. I have to stop taking hormones two weeks prior to surgery. You know what? Be then after surgery, I can't start taking hormones until about two weeks after surgery. So that's about where that's who. And that can be hard on me because, you know, if, I mean, I could do it, but it's going to be like, ooh, hard. And not easy. And it ain't easy being a female. And some guys out there think it pretty damn easy being a woman. No, it ain't easy at all. You have to be on your guard all the time. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Cause you got some very nasty guys out there some, that would rather do you in or, or rather get on to get you and rather pull you up and rape you and they got to be very damn careful about that. Have to protect yourself about with, with rape. I, I, I protect myself. I'm very protected of that myself because I know that's something all trans women do because they have a, they have the same hours ability to be raped by a mean man as if I assist a, somebody born a female ass. I have somebody being raped and, and that all already had somebody do that to me. <sighs> Raymond ran too old, mean man, did this to me. I mean, I tried to help him out and he ends up turning me and beat the living crap out of me. With a, all of that, that was horrible. I was really, I took all the thing I got to get him out of my apartment. It took more than that. I, he was arrested, he went to, and he took off. And he ran over here and a half. I found, and the police did nothing. The courts did nothing. I couldn't find him. But I had a pretty gun. What did I do? I went to the, I found him in London. I went down to London. I figured I'm gonna do a hunt. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find him. I, 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 I gotta do a little bounty hunting myself. I'm gonna say, look, I'm gonna do a dog. I'm gonna do a dog the bounty hunt. I'm gonna find out where he is, the location, go to the police, and hand him. Well, I went there and I um, and I found out where he was. He was at an old location. It was Larry Lord. Larry Lord put him up, not realizing that he put him up fugitive, of course, him and he not realize. So what happened? Well, that pizza pizza, they came into pizza pizza and they served the paperwork to him. They arrested him at Pizza Pizza. Arrested him at Pizza Pizza on Dundas Street East. And after he got arrested, hmm, you know what happened after that? They, and then they got arrested there after two years on a run. Now, apparently, not only did he got arrested, Larry Lord was arrested for being a, for harboring a fugitive. Oh, Larry Lord had to go to he had to go to court here in Hamilton on hiring a fugitive. You know, so when I went to court, and uh, too, they, 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 he was uh, fined, he went to jail, and many other, a few other charges, like, besides being a lawfully at large, escape in custody, not reporting, blah, blah, blah. And those other charges, on top of the other charges, guess what? He and her mind on top of that, and and Larry Lord had go to well, Larry Lord got two, four months in jail here for um for harboring a fugitive. <laughs> yeah, that is like really for well, aiding and abetting a fugitive, basically. So that was really um 
bad. So I didn't know that really bad for him, yeah. So it wasn't too great that he did this, but he did. He got caught and he had to pay the piper. Cause you know, this is the worst case I've been entrenched. And I can admit, and I had guys that want, I had the guys that will come, they do one night stand, they dump you next, and two hours later and they, and then I see them again. That I seen too. I, I man that older guys who likes me, but I mean, I'm very protected now over that. A more protective man. You know, I picked a you know, nice guy in the apartment building next door to me. I sort of I protected myself. Because, I mean, I don't want him to see my male part. He expects to see a Bazina, not not a Willie. So I do, I trying to not to hold off on it a bit until maybe after a bomb surgery. I may let get let more guys do sex after bomb surgery, but I gotta be very cautious about it. And so I tell you, once, once, once I got him, once he got me into his apartment, he owned me basically. That's it. I'm not going to do it. That's why I'm very cautious about it. More cautious than you and I ever be. You know why? Number one, you got to be cautious. Number two, you have to be cautious. You know why I have to be cautious for it? I'll tell you why. I give you a damn reason why you gotta be cautious. Right? If you're not cautious, the guys are gonna go all over your face. Trust me, men will go all over your face and they will walk over you and they will not, you know, nice. And there are guys out there really nice. Another person, another one you gotta watch out for the homeless males who say, this and that, dress like a man, or drill derogatory stuff. Some of the stuff homeless guys in Hamilton say is unbelievable. Oh, they say to me, I know what, I don't, I totally ignore them, and I just, you know, learn to ignore shit like that. I know it all that shit. I don't let it interfere with my life. Another thing I watched out for is this, you know, Anti, anti trans group, religious group, who showed up at the uh, Pine Trust on Gay Park. They're horrible, disgusting demonstrators, and they were telling, they were being very confrontational and stuff, telling me to, you know, they sit like that, and they handed me one of the pieces of literature, I read it, and you know what happened was, I looked at it, and two seconds later, I tore it up and threw it in the garbage pair. It was disgusting, disgusting literature. You know, I got, I was very disgusting. I mean, it's so disgusting. I, I, I can't even put this on YouTube because it was that bad. Huh. I mean, bottom surgery, I would put on YouTube, but I will do it under parental advisory. I will say on it, there's a viewer Expressing his vice, I would say that, you know? And, and the yellow, and the, the confrontational, and everything out, it was horrible. I mean, these guys were spoiling, these guys pretty much almost ruined my, all ruined their Pride Day. We all got ruined by yellow vest demonstrators, disgusting, dirty people they are. Matter of fact, I say to myself, I do not like those demonstrators. No kind of demonstrate could be tied into terrorism, could be tied into other groups of terrorism. How are they getting money? I don't know who's funding them, but I certainly would like to know who's funding these people. If I can find out who's funding them, we can cut off the funding. I can find out who the funders are, and I could go there and hopefully get... If they don't have money to demonstrate, uh, you know, and run that, uh, get there. Well, uh, police came and they moved to the demonstrator, put and took, and then they, all that removed from gay parking. That was like really bad. I mean, after that, it was quite, every festival really picked up. People were partying like crazy. We were partying, I partied like crazy that day, you know. My God, it was good. But unfortunately, this being, being out, that things that I noticed, and that thing I seen in Hamilton alone when, 
And another thing, LGBTQ, you get to go, if you try and start transitioning to a woman, and if you start, and let's suppose you are in a special care home, a lodging home, or if you are out on a city street, street for example, homeless, person on the street, a low income, very low income, and he started, well, here's what happens. You, you go through it, but, but when you, but you, but here you end up being high rent, can't afford it, end up on the street, take a home home. What happened? Well, you always go for women's shelter. Not always go for men's shelter, a women's shelter. In Hamilton here, women can stay up to six months in a shelter here in Hamilton. Other municipalities may vary by your, by miss, by other other cities. It varies, you know, and it does by the cities, and it, and it can vary between province to province, and all the United States. A little harder for our to be scooper to me to get get bed in women's shelter in the U.S. <coughs> because number one. Our person transgender considered a man in some states unless they have a surgery, so you have to act pretty much like a man. You can't go to women's shelter or men's shelter. Now, if you have the operation done, then you can go to a women's shelter. Yes. Think about it. If you go to women's shelter in the States, that's a little different. I don't they have criteria. They're way different. Matter of fact, there are parts of the rest where having female on a bird ship that can be a real blessing. If you go down to Florida, Miami, and if you go to a woman's bathroom, Miami, you know, in Miami, Florida, think of at the uh, at the airport. And my and, and Miami Air, Miami Airport going to bring you to the bathroom there. If you train, you better watch, better make sure to have female birth certificate. Cause in the state of Florida, if you transgender, you can run into a lot of issues down in southern Florida. Because two reasons why: number one, the very state of Florida very anti-trans, and the worst state you be in. Number two, if I went on a cruise ship, I make sure I have my bomb surgery done first before I do any cruise ship. Why? I'll tell you why. Number one, if they can't say I'm a man if I have my bomb surgery done. <laughs> hey. Number two, they can't they can't say man they see a vagina. Now, number two is can they say I'm a woman or not? No. They see me as a woman, and that's how they see me as a female. Yes, they see me as a woman. That's great. That is wonderful to get to see a woman. Now, that too, but they will treat me as a woman because they see my birth shirt, says F on it, boom. And if even, you know, if that happened to me somewhere in the U.S., Quite a, a year ago, two years back. Um, two years back, I was in upstate New York. Actually, uh, over in the Detroit, Michigan, two years back. I went across Detroit and did walk, looked around downtown Detroit, and I wasn't there too long. I had to go to a bathroom. So I went to a lady's room a few years back. And I got told by security guard, you know, you, you know, because said you cannot use the lady room unless you are a man. Now, what in the fuck? That? I said, asked him, is this a law in Michigan State or not? I said, and he said, couldn't answer that. And I went and looked at the law books for Michigan State, and yes, there's a law there that says. There's no law governing a transgender person from using a woman's room, but they wrote up saying that transgender people mentally ill and have to be locked up in the hospital. They have this old law still where you have to prove it by your birth certificate. Or like a female gender birth certificate, 
I proved it. Oh my God, we are terribly sorry. Apologize to me, and that's that, you know. You know, so um, so then it was like um, that's a good thing. But in the state of Michigan, very anti-trans state. Texas, another anti-trans. California is not anti-trans. They pretty welcome that. New York State, a very transgender friend. Matter of fact, the best state by LTBQ is upstate New York. California, very not. California, best state living in Connecticut, not, because they're not anti-trans. But some states in the U.S. are very bad to live in. Illinois, Indiana, another bad one. Chicago, not, uh, uh, Indiana, Illinois, not so bad. So you have to be aware of an LTVQ and what it really details because if you don't watch yourself, you can get yourself in serious trouble. In a few cases, some LGBTQ people in the U.S., the Canadians have gone visit the United States, have got in that a situation, and then they end up, and they, because they consider not considered a birth defect of a Canadian law, they are locked up in mental hospitals and try to be and D. And, and they do gender, don't do in the United States mental hospital, don't do gender conversion therapy, try to convert into being male. Anyways, and it doesn't work too well on transgender females. Anyway, so these are the kind of things you gotta watch out. Oh, UK or Europe is very open to trans people. If you went to Europe or UK, they very open. They got a, they have, they have, a, a, even they own their own private castle in England. And you, if you go, if, if I'm married, I went there, I can stay there. They own private castle, but also they have their own castle. It's called, they call it the uh, Pride, call it Pride Castle. They call, you know, British called the Pride Castle. It's a castle they bought, and they fixed up, made it beautiful inside. And if you transgender or LTBQ, you are very, uh, you're very welcome to stay at that castle. It's the most beautiful thing you ever want to see. Beautiful inside. The transgender people said they had gone to England, had stayed there, and they said they're the most beautiful castle they ever wanted, and it has like beautiful bedrooms and. And it, and it is a trans person married to a non-trans male, they stay in one part of the castle, they stay there. But m me being single trans people, they come from all over the United States and Canada. And they stay there sometimes for a week, two weeks, a month, sometimes to go there and they don't come home, they don't come back, they immigrate and they just live there, period. But honestly, a castle like that is very, very nice. The most beautiful guy. I seen, I had seen photographs online. I seen a couple of photographs online of it already. The people are taking photographs. They have been there, and they don't. Have, they're totally private. No public tour allowed. They don't do public tours of it, and they, and and you have free run a whole damn castle too. I never been there, but Trump people said the free run. They even get to see a dungeon, and you had, and you, but you have to be transgender to go there. You cannot be non-trans. Go be non-trans. They they will not let you on their grounds, or they will ask you to leave a non-trans. If you trans, you go, because strictly transgender and it built, and it it's strictly trans. You cannot if you gay, if you gay or drag queen can go there, a gay person can attend it, a humble me, I can go there and I can live, I can go there and attend it too, I wanted to be there. And it, like it's restricted to trans, LTBQ only, basically, drag queens. So, you know, I think drag queens are, you know what the difference between LTBQ and drag queens are? Do you want to know or do you want to tell me? The difference between LTBQ and drag queens are that LTBQ is somebody who is going, it's changing their gender to be a female, to be a female, I feel like. Um, 
a drag queen as a person who puts on fancy clothes, fake, fake, fake everything, and put on fake law of makeup, and to go out on stage and do a show. That's a drag queen. Go into a bar or and do a drag queen show. And they sound like really very pretty looking, but the drag queens are not fem are not biological females. They are guys that go on stage to do shows. Then a different a gay guy, a gay person, somebody who gay says this. They um a gay person is is being LGBTQ and the gay person a gay person is a guy that don't want to transition, but he, but he get, but he has uh, enough hormones in him to um, go after go after males. That's a gay guy. That's a gay person. That's a really gay. And they, they fall. Gay people fall under the same umbrella as our LGBTQ, but they're not LGBTQ. They're not transgender women. LGBTQ is somebody who's going to be a female. A woman is going to be do that for the rest of their life. That out to be cute. So there's a pretty big ground between those kinds of people, and you know, like that. And some people will, some guys will choose to be out to be cute by choice. They choose to be a female. They make that choice. I don't like being man. I'll be a female. Boom. They choose it. Uh, I, I, it's. Well, this suits. I didn't choose it. It suits me in a way. It, 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 I didn't. I. I. I it, the transition so suits me in a way because I, when I was young, I. I mean, I was looking at guys in the classroom going like this, staring off in the space. Look at guys in the classroom and they're out getting. I had get bad marks and guys who hit me and tease me about it. And so, and I told her to go after a female to get drilled that Amy Conley guy called gender conversion. And I went up to see Brian, and he did some mean stuff and see, oh my God, stuff I can't even, stuff I'm not even saying YouTube because it's just bad. And I just really don't want to say it on YouTube. Even I could, even today, if I walk past, even today if I'm sitting on a bus going up mountain, especially uh, passing by the West Fifth campus, even though it looks like a nice view outside, I get stigma about mental hospital. I get stigma. I go. I mean, any mental hospital give me a stigma because, you know, about it. I mean, I have stigma. That's almost like, well, you know, I don't want to get it. Or worse, go and visit somebody in a mental hospital. I just a stigma. I feel like I'm being mm, a stigma. Now I got stigma. I'd lie me. I just, I just hate mental. I hate going bits on mental. I had this mental hospital fear, and it was a fear and that still in turn for me from see, my rock and see for eye. It just is stigma itself because every time I walk in, I'm afraid of being admitted every time for no apparent reason. That's what I think about, you know. Well, anyways, well, anyways, so um, there's another thing too I was going to mention too is. That being trans is is really a wonderful thing. It's a beautiful thing, me transitioning. I mean, the most beautiful thing I ever done in my life. It saved my life. Also make me think of how I look at females. A two, you know what? Saved my life how I look at women. And the way I look at females today Oh man, we have to look at women now is yeah, I don't women are nice biological wise. They might give me tips on how to do things like hair, makeup and that. That's one way. But also saying to the way you behave too. And the way you look in public. You know, I track a lot of men in public. I I mean my female look does it. Now. But I can't be saying that too but um may vary from how you can transition. Some people got very in breast sizes, I'll tell you that. Sometimes a pizza at home, some will develop like C cups, or some will develop A's, but some will develop D's in some cases. And the biggest development you're ever gonna have by being transgender after vaginoplasty done and you back on hormone, a huge development happens then. Some big development could happen. You could grow big breasts into a D cup and Remain there forever, 
uh, and it could grow up in their sea cup and stay there forever, and but bottom out eventually, or or yeah, or any any and on top of that. Top of that, you have glitter, so you gotta sit like a woman more than less like a man, sitting like a female more, yeah. Because the glitter is there and it's very tender, I heard. But glitters also have orgasms, and glitters make an orgasm. So <coughs> when they have orgasms, what happens? You have a wonderful thing, yeah. So. I'm going to do is, I'm going to say, well, it's getting down to almost 30 minutes here and 8 seconds. I'm going to be a long video. I'm going to say thank you for listening to a long vlog, and I will going to sign off here. But this is sort of what it, what really transitioning really is, and not what it not, and basically. So, hope you enjoyed the vlog, and remember... Don't drink and drive. Take taxi, public transit. And remember, tune me in on the internet, 93.3 CFU.ca, Peacemaker Journey. So oh, you hear me on air doing my radio show. I do not talk about it my, on public air. Do the real news are not there because they do. Any news will have to be killed for what on YouTube do because yeah, it's not that. Anyway, vlog is now over, and hope you enjoy your rest of your have wonderful and productive day or evening.